So the only person that doesn't have one is the person that wasn't born. And the only person that's not using their gift is somebody that's dead. Ooh. With that being said that it means everybody has a gift. Everybody has been given an opportunity to work their gift. Everybody, nobody can say I was not given a gift to use it. Right. Nobody can say God did not give me anything to use. The problem, however, is when we start to look at other people's gifts against the one we have. Because uh, maybe you want to be a prophet, but God gives you to clean the toilet. Uh, maybe you, you want to be bishop and come up here and pr and preaching and, and, and God wants you to be in the kitchen cooking. Lord have mercy. So you're focusing on other people's gift and not looking at what God gave you. Uh, since I laid a foundation already, I'm not going to spend much time trying to lay one again. But understand then, beloved, if I have been given a gift, I have got to learn to use my gift. But the problem is, Bishop, I, I hear you preach a man eagle, but uh, how can I use something I don't even know that I have? Word. Lord have mercy. Now, uh, the problem then is, uh, and I quote, anybody that doesn't know themselves is somebody that have never realized themselves, unquote. Uh, that's from one of my quotations. I'm not quoting nobody. I'm quoting myself. The devil is a liar. Mm, thank you, Holy Ghost. Help. So, if it is then, I have been given a gift, then how it is, I am going to know about my gift. Uh, well, you have not come into self-awareness until you have discovered who you are. Uh, it's too quiet in here. I wish I had a church. Uh, you see, sometimes people say, I'm going to find my gift or I want to find my gift. But the reality is nobody can find their gift because it wasn't lost. You can only find something that has been lost. You don't find your gift. You discover your gift. Oh, tell somebody he's preaching good already. Uh, uh, so since God gave me my gift, my gift is not lost. So I've got to discover what I was given and then learn to use what I have been given. So I've got to discover who I am. So if I'm going to discover my gift, then I need to go and talk to the person that gave me the gift. The problem is a lot of people, they're not talking to the giver of the gift. So because they don't have relationship with the one that gave the gift, they never discover who they are. Oh God, so they spend their time in church. Uh, oh, somebody said preach eagle. So they spend their time uh, in church or just in life. Lost because your gift, the discovering of your gift then brings your life into alignment. Uh, not only with God but with people. Because when you know who you are, nobody can tell you otherwise. Ah, ah, the problem then was with Israel. Because when Israel went into the land, they lost their identity. Uh, God told them not to be like the other nation, the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Jebusites and all the other side that was around them. The problem with Israel was that Israel skipped kept following the nation and not following God. Uh, when you look at people and you say, I want to be that and I want to be that, uh, you are robbing me of who you are. Uh, 
uh, because you're spending all your life uh, uh, trying to be Whitney Houston uh, when you should be singing in your bathroom. Oh, Shia. I feel like preaching in here. Ah, so Israel then now they start to compare what God gave them uh, with who, who, who was on the other side. And then when they start to compare then, uh, they said to themselves, uh, we see ourselves like grasshoppers. Uh, the problem with that was that God didn't tell them they were grasshoppers. Uh, it was the perception that they have. Oh, good God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I wonder who I'm talking to this afternoon. Because perception can be a problem. Because, because God has given you a gift and you don't like your gift. You want to trade your gift for somebody else's gift. And when you want to trade your gift, that's the time you run into somebody else's lane. Uh, we were here a couple of Sundays ago when Prince says, I feel the anointing so much on me that I've stepped out of my lane and step into somebody else than that lane. Oh Lord have mercy. Anybody heard him? Because he was not satisfied with what God gave to him. He wanted somebody else give. But God didn't give me my gift to put it on the shelf. God never called me to be a mimic. When God made me baby love, I was the only one of his kind. When God gave me and he made me, he threw away the copy. Oh, shut up higher. There is nobody like Bishop in the world. I wish I could talk to somebody that's gifted, but you have put your gift aside. I thought there is nobody like me in the earth. Oh, God, you ain't never met nobody like me. Oh, God, you ain't never seen nobody like me. If you check my fingerprint, I carry the only fingerprint. No matter how much of us in here has finger, there is no two person in here which is identical. Glory be to God. Everybody is in your distinctive. You are here, here too quiet. So, beloved, I've got to learn now that God give me my gift. Oh God, my gift then make me separate from everybody else. When you look at the market, have you ever gone to the supermarket? And when you go to the supermarket, you see them having, let's say for argument's sake, you look at the shelf on Bully Beef. I, I, I like Bully Beef. But when you go to the Bully Beef section, you see Grace Kennedy. Oh God, you see, give me something else. You see Lasco, give me the next one. You see Cows. But what makes you choose is based on the label. Because based on the label, you decide which bully beef you're going to take. Yeah. I, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I, I, I don't like Lasko bully beef. Oh, Lasko, I don't have nothing against you. Oh, I like Grace Kennedy. So when I look at the chef, oh God, I'm glad that the label is there. Because if there was no label, I would have picked the wrong one. Oh, good God. Then with church people huh, is that some of you have no labor. Huh? Oh God, you, you look like Grace Kennedy. Huh? You, you, you look like Laska. Huh? But what is your? Oh shy, huh? What is your labor? Huh? Oh God, from glory. Huh? Because your gift then huh, makes you stand out. Huh? When you have your gift, huh? your gift makes you different from uh, every. Oh God, everybody can come up here and sing, but nobody can sing like Sister Rochelle. The only problem is Sister Rochelle don't believe in herself. So when she come up here, she's like, oh good God. But if she ever start using that gift, every demon will have to lift up out of her hands. I touch your neighbor, say neighbor. I'm gonna use my gift. I'm not here yet, I still got to preach. I got some little more work to do, Brother V. So, so, so. I've got to discover who I am. When I now discover who I am, it brings me into self 
awareness. Self awareness then lead me to what is called self identity. I got so when I know my self awareness, I have no self identity. I got if you notice, beloved, that the police work for the government and the soldier work for the government, but they don't wear the same uniform. I wish I had somebody in here. Uh, they both walk with gun. They both use gun. But their roles are different. Oh, good God from glory. Uh, one is serve and one is ready to kill. I got the police and the soldier will be on the road. And they're at one location. But it is not the soldier's job to lock you up. But it's the soldier's job if you try to do something. He's going to put a bullet in your head. Can I talk to somebody in here? We are in church today. And all of us is in prophetic. Which one are you? Are you the police? Are you the soldier? Are you sitting here and you don't know who you are? Well, if you don't know who you are. Baby, you don't have no identity. Uh, oh, good God. Uh, and people uh, that doesn't have no identity uh, try to look like other people. Uh, oh, God, that's the reason why uh, black people try to look white. Uh, because they don't value uh, the melanin in their skin. Uh, they don't know who they are. Uh, so God made them black. According to the climatic condition uh, that we live in the tropics, uh, but they're trying to act like somebody uh, that lives in snow, uh, so they want to look brown uh, when God made them black. Uh, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, uh, did God call you to sing, uh, but you want to preach? Uh, the devil is a liar. Uh, look at somebody, say, neighbor, uh, I'm gonna use my gift. Uh, Oh God, but the that you so quiet. You listening to the word. You've got to come into realignment of who you are. And when you know who you are, you don't wait on nobody to promote you. When you find out your gift, you start using your gift. When Elisha got the mantle of Elijah, there was other prophets that was around. But Elisha did not consult the school of the prophet. He didn't go to them and say, should I work or should I not work? But the Bible said that Elisha took up the mantle. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The reason why Elijah took him across Jordan because if he was going to come back across, he had to split Jordan the same way Elijah went over. So when Elijah picked up the mantle, he didn't consult a prophet. He didn't consult his friends. Oh, can I preach in here? He didn't consult his mother. The God that gave him the gift, he said, let me see if the card that was in my father, let me see if that same God is in this mantle. So the Bible said that Elisha took up the mantle and shrank Jordan. Can I preach up in here? And the Bible said that when Elisha hit the Jordan banks, the Bible said that the banks of Jordan push back the borders. Can I talk to somebody? The Bible says your gift will make room for you. The reason why you're still broke is because you're not using your gift. The reason why you're still sick is because you're not using your gift. The reason why you're still sad is because you're not using your gift. But I don't care who don't like me. I don't care who don't want to see me coming here. I'm going to use 
use my gift because God gave me my gift and he need to give it to me to sit down on it so I got to learn to use my gift so like your neighbor give them a high five I said neighbor what are you doing with your gift Somebody else said, neighbor, what you doing with your gift? Oh, shut up. Oh, can I, can I, can I, can I preach like I feel it? Oh, come on, somebody. So the Bible said, can I tell you that if you're going to use your gift, the first thing you've got to have is that you got to have a desire oh good God a desire then the word desire comes from what is called a drive it means a strong emotional feeling what desire do you have do you have a desire to preach do you have a desire to sing do you have a desire to clean the church do you have a desire to pray? Oh, come on up here. Uh, you got to have a desire. But there are some people, uh, they're satisfied uh, coming to church uh, and sitting down every Sunday uh, on their blessed assurance uh, and they're not doing anything. Uh, they're satisfied uh, sitting on their own, uh, coming in here uh, and watching everybody else doing the work. Uh, sit and watch it work. Can I talk to somebody? So we have those that watch the work and then we have those that do the work. Touch your neighbor. I know my Lord God. you going to make them mad right now. But touch your neighbor even if they don't want. That's not your neighbor crosses. That's your neighbor beside you. The devil is alive. I better behave myself. Oh God. Oh Lord, let me give. Oh, yeah. oh God, I feel it. Don't make me laugh and mess up the message. So then. Oh glory be to God. Help me, Holy Ghost. Bring back my mind. Oh God. So what you got to do then? Ask your neighbor. Neighbor, are you in here watching the work? Are you a doer of the work? Look at them and wait for them to tell you about it. I don't move till they tell you who they are. <laughs> oh God. Uh, uh, if they tell you they're watching the world, then get up and change your seat. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> oh God. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 did they talk to you? <laughs> oh God. Uh, if they didn't talk to you, change your seat. <laughs> and if they're watching the world, change your seat. <laughs> oh God. Uh, so I got to have them. <laughs> a desire. <laughs> desire thing uh, is what pushed me into my purpose. Uh, it pushed me into my calling. Uh, but desire alone by itself uh, is not good enough. Uh, so if I have desire, uh, number one, uh, number two, uh, I must have passion. Uh, passion then uh, it is an insatious appetite uh, that cannot be quenched uh, unless you do the work. Ah, God, I had a desire, but now I have a passion. Ah, what is it that you're passionate about? Oh, God, I'm passionate about my wife. Oh, shut up, oh, Lord, God, I'm passionate about coming to church. I'm passionate about serving God. I'm passionate about preaching. I'm passionate about seeing people heal. That's why God gave me deliverance ministry. Because I don't like to see people sick. I'm passionate to preach and study to show myself approved. Because I want somebody to know when I dissect the word that I know how to do it. So I've got to have a desire. But then I have to have what is called passion. My passion keep me up in the middle of the night. When you're passionate about something, it makes you can't go to your bed. Oh God, I'm passionate about you. I think about you. Oh God, I remember when I just met First Lady. I had a 
desire for her. And I keep talking to her. But the more I talked to her, I became passionate about her. And when I became passionate about her, I then wanted to see her. And any time I couldn't see her, I was mad. Because I had a passion for her. Can I talk to somebody? Well, God is saying, it's the same way with your gift. You got to have a desire, but then you got to have a passion. But then number three, you have to have a lifestyle. So you got to move from desire and move from passion and get into a lifestyle. A lifestyle now is the practice. I used to walk to preach, but now I am preaching. I used to have a desire to pray, but now I am prophesying. I used to have a desire to sing, but now my desire has become a lifestyle. And if it is a lifestyle, it's a part of me. So you can separate my gift from who I am. If you look at me, you see a preacher. I remember years ago when I was going to my former church, they used to call me Bishop when I was just a brother in the church because I had a desire to become a bishop. But it was not my lifestyle. It was just a desire. And my desire turned into passion. And now I'm living the I wish I had a church. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I've got to learn now to activate my gift. The problem with a lot of people is that their gift is dead. Their gift is not activated. They sit in church with dead gifts and dead tongues. Some of you have a smoking in tongues from January. Some of you haven't spoken in tongues from last two years. You got a dead baby, a dead gift. Yabasha, God has given you a gift, but you have lost your desire. You have lost your passion. And if there's no desire and no passion, you can never have a lifestyle. Sister Duncan, I feel like giving you the mic to finish preach. Are you got the word? Well, I'm going to the mountains now. So the Bible said that Jeremiah, can I go to my story? That Jeremiah, the name Jeremiah, mean God has appointed. So Jeremiah was appointed by God from before the inception of his birth he was called to be a prophet like John he was a prophet from in the womb not yet so so Jeremiah was called to prophesy to Judah he was with King Zedekiah Ezekiel and Jeremiah hallelujah before the carrying away into Babylon can I preach some word up in here so Jeremiah lived in what was called pre-exilic lifestyle pre-exile before they went into bondage can I preach can I preach Hallelujah. Oh, glory. So Jeremiah then, pre-exilic, was living in the time and God had called Jeremiah to warn Jerusalem of an impending judgment that was coming. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. The impending judgment that was about to take
Taking Hallelujah Jeremiah At the task To prophesy And preach To Judah That judgment Was coming So because of that Jeremiah Was hated He wasn't a person That was very like Jeremiah Is also known As the the weeping prophet because Jeremiah whenever God gave him a prophecy he would weep before the walls of Jerusalem Jeremiah hallelujah when he was called said to God that God I'm not able to prophesy so the Bible said that God put a word in the mouth of Jeremiah and said, Prophesy, oh glory, now for 20 years, my letter God talks a call for 20 years, Jeremiah and prophesy, hallelujah, to Judah. And the Bible said that Pasha, who was now governor of Judah, because Jeremiah was preaching so long and he wasn't seeing anything coming to pass, Jeremiah decided that he was going to quit. Is there anybody in here today? You've been given a gift, but you feel like nothing happening. But Bishop isn't calling you to preach the word. Bishop isn't calling you to pray. Bishop isn't calling you to sing the song of Zion. Hallelujah. So you sit down. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you sing the song. Me in my small corner. It's too hard to use my gift. I'm tired of prophesying and nobody looking at me. I'm tired of singing in my bathroom. And Bishop is giving me the mic. I'm tired of evangelizing on the bus. And Bishop is calling me to evangelize. So you know what the Bible said, Jeremiah, of the 20 years, the Bible said that Pasha locked him up and put him in prison and beat him with stripes. Hallelujah. His hands was in stocks and his feet was in stock. They locked his hands and they locked his feet, but they didn't lock his mouth. The devil has messed you up in all point, but the devil in the lock of your mouth, you still got a yes God in your mouth. Can I preach? Can I preach? So Jeremiah, hallelujah, begin to look at what he had. I want to make three points and I'll send you home. So Jeremiah. To deal with his trouble. Number one, when you're gifted, you're going to have trouble. I've never seen anybody that's gifted that doesn't have any trouble. Yabasha, look at Hallelujah. David had sword in his back. Joseph brothers like it. Can I talk to you? If you are gifted, you're going to have trouble. Jeremiah had trouble. 
nothing because everybody was mocking it. Jeremiah was being mocked, laughed at, hated, ridiculed. And because of that, he had to deal with trouble in the prison. But he had to deal with predicament from the people that did not like him. Hallelujah. And number three, he had a dilemma. Yabasha. Number one, trouble. Number two, predicament. Number three, dilemma. Hallelujah. Because Jeremiah said, God, now is the sea. Say, Lord, thou hast deceived me. Hallelujah. Dilemma. He cursed the day he was born. He cursed his mother. He cursed his father. He said, God, I wish I never had this gift. Because nobody liked me. They say I speak in tongues too much. They say I follow Bishop too much. I come to church. I didn't want to be on my bear, but God made me an armor bear beside the bishop. So everywhere the bishop go, I got to go. Hallelujah. But Jeremiah had to deal with his dilemma. Give me a cheer. And because of dealing with trouble, predicament, the Bible said that Jeremiah decided I'm going to keep quiet. I'm not going to make mention of his name. I'm going to lock up my gift. I'm going to put down my gift. Because nobody in the church that don't like me. Special and 
church I'm going to speak you out of my mouth because you have lost your first love what is it that God has given you to do but you have stopped doing it you have stopped praying do you know you can be a powerful intercessor Nobody will have to see up here on the mic. A prayerful saint is a powerful saint. 
A prior lesson is a power lesson. So the more prior is the more power. No prior, no power. So maybe God called you to be a prayer warrior. And you said, oh no, I don't want to be a no prayer warrior. I want to be a preacher. Because you want everybody to see you. But that's not your gift. If we give you the mic to preach, you're going to mash up the whole service. Because that's not your gift. Find your gift and work it. What's the wire, boy? Tell somebody, find your gift and work it. Where is your desire? Where is your passion? I can't ask you where is your lifestyle. Because if you have no desire, no passion, you will never have a lifestyle. And then some of you are like Jeremiah. Having to deal with trouble. Deal with predicament. Deal with dilemma. So you're gone and park your gift. You say, oh me, me now go back a prophet because God would know. But you made a sad mistake. Because you think you're pleasing Bishop. Working for Bishop, I'm working for God, and I'm not working for Bishop to see me. Some people are working for me to see them. I'm concerned about you. I'm concerned about God. Work while it's day, for the night coming, but nobody will be able to work. The Bible said Jeremiah sat down and said, I'm not going to preach no more. But, Sister Ali, when Jeremiah went to sit down, that was when the prophecy was just about to fulfill. Because he was warning for 20 years. And just when the prophecy was going to fulfill. He shut up. That's like a lot of you in here. Just when you were right at your breakthrough, just when your gift was about to make room, you stopped. Moses says, I have a stutter, I can't talk. So God gave him error. Isaiah said, I'm, I'm too young, I can't talk. So God had to put a life coal in his lip. Ezekiel said, oh me, I can't say a word. So God gave him a scroll to eat. And Jeremiah said, oh me, me I said one word. But God filled it with fire. God said, when I come here today, I should unlock some gift. But don't unlock the gift of nobody who don't want to work. <laughs> so today is going to be a day when there are those of you in here that God has given you a gift. God says, time to use your gift. It's time to use your gift. Today is the day to unlock it. And God said, don't call nobody. Today is not the day when I'm going to say, mission come. Sister Allen, come. Carol, come. No, today is not that day. God says, whomever ever get 
and want your gift to be unlocked from a land. Don't waste my time. Don't, don't waste my time. If you're not ready to work, sit down. God ain't begging nobody to come. Today is not a begging day. This message is for everybody that has a gift. But nobody notice you. Nobody see you. Nobody call you. Oh, but I'm evangelist. Bishop Ben used to be in the church. How much people you pass on the road every day? <laughs> you talking about Bishop don't use you in the church? How much people have you passed on the road? Did you tell them about Jesus? So what kind of evangelist you are? You ain't no evangelist. <laughs> you have a form of God. But denying the power. For those of you who continue to come to Bible class, you will learn about all the different gifts. As we move from the fivefold and go into the other gifts. Shangabahai. Gift of prophecy. Some of you have the gift of tongues. If I'm a prophet, it means there are more prophets in here. If I'm a prophet, it means that there are prophetess in here. More word. If I'm a bishop, it means God gonna raise up a bishop in here. More word. If I'm an anointed preacher, it means God gonna anoint people in here to preach. More word. Gifts of healing is in the church. Gifts of miracles, signs, and wonders. When you lay your hands on sick people, they're going to see, feel a burning heat. And they're going to be healed. 